Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be making a digital subscriber counter. Now in this project, I'm trying to do something that I thought might be possible, and that is having a piece of wood on the front that is literally one shaving thick. That way the LCD screen can show through, because the LCD screen in this kit is a little bit, uh, well it's not quite as bright as I'd like. In the past I've done it with a much brighter LCD screen, and so it pops through and you can actually get it through um, almost a sixteenth of an inch of wood. And so uh, this one was a little bit more of an experiment with me to see if I could make this work. And in the end, uh, eh, not so much. <laughs> um, so you get to see my thought process with what I was thinking and where I went wrong along the way. So let's dive in and take a look at this project and see what we can learn for next time. For this project, I'm using a solid block of cherry. This is the same cherry that I used to make the leg vices on both of my benches. A uh, beautiful piece of wood, and it ages really well over time. But I need to cut it down into a more usable block. So I kind of spaced out what size it should be, and then went to town ripping and slicing to get that block out of here. Ended up being about uh, two and a quarter inches by about three inches by about uh, seven inches long or so. You don't get to see me use the buck saw that often, but anytime I have to cross cut through a fairly thick piece of wood, the buck saw is what I like to use for that. Uh, it's just it's designed for doing more of uh, cutting logs and slicing them down, but uh, it works well for any large piece of lumber. Don't expect it to leave a really nice clean line, but in this case I'm going to be smoothing everything out and it doesn't need to be perfectly clean. Now we can start actually dimensioning this block of lumber. I want to start with one edge and make that perfectly true, flat, and twist-free. Uh, if you want to see more information on this, I do have several videos on dimensioning lumber and actually creating a nice smooth surface. Once I have one surface down, then we can make the other one 90 degrees off of the first one, make sure that that is flat and twist-free and 90 degrees to the first side, and then we can keep going around the block until we get it nice and clean all the way around. I'm usually going to start with a scrub plane and then go on to something a little rougher until I get down to a smooth plane. Once I have all four sides, then I can do the two ends. Um, and rather than planing these down to something square, it is easier to actually cut them to something square and then just trim them up. So you can see I used a square to run around the end and mark it off, and then I can come in with my carcass saw and slice it down and give a fairly smooth end. You just need to trim them up and clean them with a plane, and we're ready to go. And with this end grain, it really does help to use a low angle plane. Uh, it cuts through that end grain really, really nicely. I do wax my saws and planes, makes them a lot easier. Uh, I have a, a, quite a few uh, videos actually on lubricating tools, and lubricating planes and such. The next step I want to do is actually cut the back off of this. And I want to have a nice clean cut all the way down uh, so that I can plane it off smooth and glue it back down. There isn't too much of a curve between them. I thought about using my Japanese saws as a little thinner of a blade, but the amount of time I'd have to put into that, well, I'm just too lazy for that. <laughs> So now that we've sawn them apart, we can smooth down both sides, make sure that they fit nicely together, and be relatively seam-free when we glue them back. Now we can start installing the electronics. I got this design from Marcel's workshop, actually Le Pic Bois, and uh, Tony Hovington did a counter using the same system. And Marcel's workshop actually goes through on his video how to wire, uh, solder it together and program it. And definitely go take a look at that if you want to see more. Um, I'll leave a link to that down below, as well as a link to the hardware that I'm using. So if you want to duplicate it, you can. I, I have another kit that I'm going to do for another one in the future, but uh, this is a, a fairly easy one to go through. I need to create a very large mortise in the back of this for the electronics to fit down into. And so for most of the stock removal, I'm going to be using a series of auger bits. I put a flag on there to make sure that the tip of the auger bit does not come out the other side. I don't want it poking through. I want to leave at least an eighth of an inch, if not more, uh, between the tip and coming out the other side. And then we can take a chisel and square out the mortise that we basically created and get it so that the electronics can fit all the way down into the slot. And a lot of this is just removing extra stock, and I was going to leave this in here, but I found that uh, I needed some sp space for the wire to go in, and I was thinking about putting a beeper inside. I decided not to in the end, but I needed to hog out a little more space. I also made it easier for the chisel. I made this depth stop that went in there that would tell me how deep I am so that I can make sure that everything is down to the same depth. 
The only tricky part is now we need to get down to where the display actually comes close to it. And I want the display at this point to be about a sixteenth of an inch away from the outside. So it's only about a sixteenth of an inch of wood or less. But the bottom of it needs to be perfectly flat, perfectly smooth, and perfectly uh, coplanar with the outside. And so to do this, what I ended up doing was creating this depth stop that I could reference. And I chiseled it down to a point. And then I could use this point on there. You can see there's a little bit of green paint on there that would scratch the bottom and then leave a little bit of green paint where it'd be high. Then I can come with a chisel and chisel that out and then go back in and scratch the bottom again. Uh, I found that using a chisel with the tip down, I could use it like a card scraper and scrape the bottom. This would give me a really nice, planed, smooth surface. And then one by one, I can go in, check the depth, make sure it's not scratching anywhere, and then scrape out what is scratching, go and check it again and then occasionally bump the depth stop down just a little more so that I can keep the entire bottom. So at some point when I scratch it, it's scratching the entire bottom perfectly smooth all the way across. Now I know it's to depth, we can put the electronics in and give it a test. Because so it's about a sixteenth of an inch, actually it's a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch right now between the display and the outside. And in my tests I found that I needed about a shaving to two shavings thick between the display and the outside. And that was just an incredibly amount, uh, incredibly thin amount. The problem is having that thin of an amount, it's going to bubble up inside and there's nothing to support it other than the display itself. So I got it down to, at this point, it's about three or four um, decent shavings thick. And when it gets dark, you can start to see it. But in the daylight, you, you couldn't see it at all. This is the ISO on the camera bumped way, way up to see it there. So I need to go a little bit thinner. I played with some sandpaper, I played with a file, I even played with an orbital sander. Um, and in the end, the best thing was the card scraper. So after doing a few other tests, we got to the point where it's basically ready to glue in place. I just need to do the final touches to it. Uh, and I can't do the final scraping the outside until I glue it in because the display is actually going to be supporting that thin piece of wood. And I'm going to glue, with super glue, I'm going to glue the face of it to that thin piece. But before I glue it in place, I need to cut a hole in the back and feed the cable through it. Uh, because once it's in place, I can't feed the cable through because the smallest end of the cable is connected to the electronics. So we can run a hole through that, put the cable in through that, glue the electronics do down, and I'm using a, a thick 2P10 gel. I'll leave a link to that down below as well. Just smearing it down to the bottom so that there's a, a thick amount of it that will completely coat the electronics to the bottom of the wood. And then I can hold all the electronics in with some hot glue and it's ready to close up. I'm just going to use some regular wood glue to close up the uh, to close up the box, clamp it in place, let it sit for a while, and then we can come back and do the final smoothing passes to get this thing down to the shaving. At this point I was really hoping that everything would work. Uh, I figured it, I had like a 50-50 chance of getting a nice smooth print and being able to see the electronics through it. Uh, but as you'll see right now, it didn't come out quite as I wanted to. So I spent some time cleaning up the, the card scraper and I have a really fine shaving on there. The hook on the end of this is so tiny that it, from here it looks like dust that's coming off, but if you look closely, you'll see that those are tiny, tiny little wood curls because I'm taking off um, like ten thousandths of an inch per scrape, just trying to get it as close as I can. And you can see that it's starting to fail and uh, bits of it were popping up here and there. It just wasn't coming together. Gluing pieces back down with super glue just wasn't doing well. Ended up getting it about a, a thousandth of an inch thick at one end, and the other end was a little bit thicker than that. But any more, and I would have ended up ripping it down and, and getting right down to the LCD display. So I want to try this in the future, possibly with a thicker, with a brighter L LCD, or coming up with some other way of getting a single shaving over the face of it and making it disappear. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe there'll be some way I can figure that out. So I decided to cut my losses, leave it where it was at, and it works well in the dark, but not in the light, and because it broke through in a few places, that's the way it goes. Cover it with some boiled linseed oil, put my stamp in the front, and uh, call it a day. I have a block of wood with an LCD display in it, and it counts my subscribers every minute, and it pops up with a new number. It's kind of fun to sit there and watch, and it works even better in the dark. But uh, yeah, I might do something different in the future, maybe with some... Uh, plexiglass or something of that nature. I don't know. We'll see. If you have any ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear them. So that's about it. Woohoo! does look kind of interesting, though.
So there you have it. This was an interesting one for me to mess around with. Now, if you want to see the kit um, that goes into this, uh, Marcel's workshop, he's the one who actually put this together and did the programming for it. So I uh, soldered this together and, and did the programming on my end, but he helped me through a lot of the other things on it, and he's the one who actually put the whole uh, tutorial together with it. So I'll leave a link to that video so you can go and make your own. Uh, it's a kind of a fun project, and I'm going to be doing one differently. I'm thinking about doing one with a, a piece of frosted glass or something like that. Uh, just a few other ideas. We'll see where it goes from there. So this is my idea. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Maybe you can think of a way of shaving down to a single layer of, of uh, wood in between. I haven't quite figured that one out myself. Maybe next time. So <laughs> love to hear your thoughts down below. And until next time, have a wonderful day. You know, when I mess up like this, I just think that I am a blockhead.